a beautiful day and God has been so good to us. I'm sure you're happy to be online with us for service. I'm happy too. So let's just go straight to talk to our Heavenly Father. Put your hands together and let's pray. Father, we thank you for another beautiful day that you have made. Thank you for all the opportunities before us. Thank you for the grace to serve you. Thank you for the opportunity to come to your presence, to praise you, to worship you, and to listen to your word. And not just that, to put your word into practice. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Please help us to do all this to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have a beautiful service. excited. It's about to get more interesting because it's time for nuggets. Our topic says how to become a smarter you. At age seven, you should have learned how to read and should start reading to learn. The nugget on how to become a smarter you continues this month. It was started last month. And we saw that to become a smarter you, number one, you need to pay attention. Number two, you need to take good notes. If you missed them, they are available on the weekly Royal Scroll for the month of September. For this month, we begin from number three, which says, plan to read ahead number one don't wait until it gets to a day before your test if you do you will rush 
and even panic and you will not be able to do your best. That can make you sad and even begin to hate or fear school. Number two, to avoid that, ask your mom or dad for a cool, small, personal calendar that you can keep by your desk or study area. Number three, write down your tests and assignment dates. If you don't know, ask your teacher and tell her why you want to know the dates. Number four, with the calendar, you can plan what you want to study after school each day and during weekends. Number five, with that calendar, you can also plan when to do extracurricular activities so they do not disturb your study time. How to become a smarter you will continue next week. Go ahead and enjoy the rest of the set. Hi there, Royal. I'm glad you're still here for the most interesting part of today's service. Can I have your attention, please? Good, let's go. Do you sometimes wonder what will become of you when you grow up? There are some who are even fearful of tomorrow. That should not be the case for a child of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, All things work together for children of God. And that is because no matter what, the enemy, the devil, throws at God's children, God has the power to turn it around for our good. Our topic today says, Our case is different. Yes, your case as a child of God, is different. With time, things can change. It could be good or bad. Now listen to this intriguing story. There was a young boy born into royalty. His grandfather was a great king and warrior of a great nation. His father was also a warrior and a crown prince, meaning the young prince was also in line to be king after his father. But then one day, when the boy was five years old, his father and grandfather were killed in a battle. As if this was not bad enough, in the panic and fear that followed their death, his nurse cared that the young prince would be killed, hurriedly carried him away to hide. But in her haste, he fell from her hand and broke his two legs and became crippled from that day. So just imagine, in one day, this little child, who was an heir to a great throne, lost everything and even became a cripple. As years went by, imagine how devastating it would have been for this boy has got to know all that befell him. And then, one day, years later, the new king found out about him and sent for him. Fear gripped his heart as the thought of the possibility of him being killed ran through his mind. What do you think finally happened to him? This story is in the Bible. Before I proceed, let me test your Bible knowledge. Do you know the people being talked about in this story? Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 9. I'll read a few verses. Verse 3. The king then asked him, Is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, Yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Verse 5 So David sent for him and brought him from Macher's home. Verse 6 
His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David said, Greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Verse 7. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Verse 13. And the Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. Mephibosheth, the grandson of King Saul, feared the worst. But King David told him not to be afraid and showed Mephibosheth kindness beyond his dreams. Not only did King David show Mephibosheth mercy by not killing him, he, King David, showered Mephibosheth with overwhelming favor by giving him all the wealth that belonged to his father and grandfather. Wealth he had only probably been told about that he never imagined would be his. This kind of favor is what is called amazing grace. Last week, we shared some of the mercy and grace that God has shown towards Pastor Chris and the King's Assembly. Indeed, as a church, we are very grateful to God for His mercy and grace that we have been enjoying in the past 20 years. Pastor Chris has had a very humble beginning. He came from a simple family in a small town. But today, by the mercy and grace of God, he has a thriving ministry that is not only known in Nigeria, but also in other parts of the world. His online breakthrough prayers, which he started about four years ago, which holds on Mondays and Tuesdays by 6.30 a.m. is fast becoming a household name, attracting thousands of people all over the world. Another grace of God is the location of the headquarters church. At the time when churches that needed to build were being offered land in the outskirts of Port Harcourt, by the grace of God, Pastor Chris located and received a vast portion of land in one of the choice areas in Port Harcourt and in two years built an edifice that can only be attributed to the grace and mercy of God. Over the past few years, so many families have relocated abroad, but the church has continued to grow because God keeps adding to the church every Sunday. That too is grace for which we are also grateful. Now, do you think we are enjoying God's grace and mercy because we are excellent in all we do? No, it is simply the love, mercies, and grace of God. Just as God looked beyond Mephibosheth's crippled and helpless state and used David to bless him. That is the same way God deals with us as children. He looks beyond our flaws and weaknesses and blesses us because we are his children. And that is why we must celebrate all we have and are as a church and in our individual lives because it is all about his mercy and grace. Now, as a royal member of TKA, know that you are a partaker of the mercy and grace 
that is in this place. Sometimes you may look at yourself as undeserving of certain things because you are looking at your present condition. The family you come from, the place you live, where you school, who you know and so on. Don't do that again. You must know and believe that your case is different because of the mercy and grace of God. Just remain humble and look to God, your Heavenly Father, whose mercy and grace is available to you and can change all that you know about yourself in one moment, not minding whether you think you deserve it or not. Now, here are some truths and lessons from today's teaching. Number one. There is no telling what grace can do for you. Number two, believe that God's mercy and grace is available to you and is more than enough to take you to the top. Number three, when you rely on God's grace, you will receive strength and help from Him at all stages in life. Number four, the key is for you to remain humble and God's grace and mercy will continue to lift you up. Now to our memory verse. It's taken from Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and it says, God is able to do far more than we could ever act for or imagine. He does everything by his power that is working in us. That's according to the New International Reader's Version. Now let's take our memory verse together again. Our memory verse is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And it says, God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. He does everything by His power that is working in us. Great job, Royal. Now, this memory verse has a song. Listen to it, learn it, and sing along. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. He does everything by His power. That is working in us, that is working in us. He does everything by his power that is working in us. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. He does everything by his power that is working in us, that is working in us. He does everything by His power that is working in us. Ephesians 3.20 Now, listen to your home play. Number one. How did King David show Mephibosheth kindness and mercy? Number two. What is one quality you need to receive God's mercy and grace. Send in your answers to the phone numbers that will be displayed on your screen at the end of today's service. Now, thank you so much, Royal, for staying through to the end. God bless you. If you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also join our Telegram channels from the link showing on your screen right now and download your Royal Scroll to help you through your quiet time all week. And be sure to be part of the next excellent chat room by sending in your questions on this topic or on any other topic to the phone numbers showing on your screen right now via WhatsApp, Telegram, or SMS. Now, go and conquer your world in Jesus' name. Amen.